And welcome back to Captain Reviews, episode 19. And so in this episode, I'm going to review the next five bills submitted to my Discord. See you in there. And the first build is the uh, Water Buffalo Wildfire Engine. So uh, let's look at the screenshot here by Chickensaur. Uh, Water Buffalo Wildlife Engine. I like how uh, kind of uh, did the old frame, but added their own detailing. I like that. Nice pictures here. By Chickensaur. Let's see here. The uh, there's Chickensaur contraptions and Rooster Utility Company and the collections. Uh, it's the RUC Performance First purpose-built wildland fire engine brought to you by Rooster, featuring a large tank and powerful monitor specifications, powered by a 13-cylinder module engine linked to a three-speed transmission with six-wheel transfer case. One long-range monitor, uh, four high-pressure uh, tack lines, two intakes capable of drafting, and two ready-to-draft winches, all supplied by the 3,000 liters of water in the truck's large tank. The tank takes about five minutes to empty with the dump valve and about two to fill with both draft lines, uh, 50 liters per second combined. Operation started in the engine is required for most systems to function. It turns on the power. Trailer hitch is standard SIBTAT with an extra Boolean channel 7 for ELS. The hood must be first be popped with the button inside the cabin before you can use the buttons on either side to fully open it. The monitor's RC controls are the same as the controls listed on the operator seat. There's a remote at the monitor operator seat's feet. Backup beeper can be shut off with a switch at the driver's foot, as can the turn signal tick. The high beams can be set or flashed with up-down respectively. Pumping requires the ignition to be on to provide power to the panels and pumps. Thanks again to my good friends Bruni for sharing their firefighting experience. Check out their fire trucks over on the workshop page. Stormworks Discord server based on firefighting run uh, Brunley. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, you can correct me if it's wrong. And me. So that's their uh, Discord. Comments, any bugs, oversights you might find. So this is kind of a neat diagram. I like this Buffalo Pump diagram. I like that diagram. That's neat. Roost Utility Company. So there's some nice, uh, there's some nice detailing in here, like this. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So let's start our walk around here. So there's some really nice paint and detailing on here. You can see it has the branding on the grill. Nice grill there. Nice uh, bumper on the front. Nice uh, forestry bumper. Winch is the nice winch there. Very nice detail in here. Little flourishes there. I like the pump panels. I like the diamond plating. That's really cool. Yeah, I like this a lot. Let's open up some side panels. Those are cool. Nice detail in there. What was that that just came down? Did that move? I don't know. Looked like it moved, but it might have been my imagination. A lot of nice detailing back here. Um, a lot of that nice pixelation on the uh, directionals. Some more uh, panels in here. Very cool. Simulate exhaust there. All right, so let's go in and let's pop that hood. Pretty easy to find the door. Sometimes it's hard to find those. Let's see. Mute mute turn signal. Those are two turn signals. Disabled parking brake could release right there. Okay. And then we need to pop it out here. So let's see if we can't find it. I like this. It's like a regular hood popper. That's neat. See if I can find where to pop it from here, though. Just take a quick second to do it. It is somewhere, I know. Let's see, where is it? It's kind of hard to find here. You know, in real life, you have the, you know, you'd have to pop it, and then you have, like, a latch. So you got to grab the latch. So I'm looking to see if it's set up like that. There we go, right here. Okay. Nice. So that's a really neat feature. I like that a lot. That uh, There's a lot of detailing in there for something that a lot of people probably will never use or notice, but it's that's the sort of detailing that I really like. Is it's, um, I like the engine. The engine looks really nice. Good detailing on that. Nice X-Melling on these. Looks like a couple microcontrollers angled. Are they on pivots? They could, I don't, I don't know how it's done. It's probably XML'd, but um, nice looking engine in there. Looks the part. Let's see if can't just shut it with the interior here. Nope. 
You have to shut it with. You have to actually pull it down. So that's that's good. Where is it? I forget where it was there. Oh come on. Where are you out there, guy? I just thought I saw it there. Did I see it? There it is right there. Okay. So it's just a regular button. So that's a neat feature. I like that. All right, so let's see. We have steering AD, WSS forward, back, left, right, turn signal, set flash high, up and down for the high beams, spaces, horn, one, and headlights. All right, ignition. Cab lights, hazards. Okay. So these must be... So it looks like that turned, uh, they turn in 90 degrees. I don't know. But uh, let's take a quick look at lights while, we're, while we have them going. Just kind of looking around, seeing if there's any. There we go. So nice emergency lights on there. Nice patterning and really cool on that. And then it said scene to the um, left or right. That might be why that's... Left scene on. Right scene on. Okay, so it's those lights there. That's very cool. I like that. And if you're going to have these running for a while, you know, that would uh, really mute those. It's kind of cool. Let me see. Horn. Nice horn. Uh, let's turn on the uh, headlights here. Remember where, I, where they were. Uh, headlights of one. Okay, let's do high beams. Uh, let's see, up, down, set, flash, high beams. Okay, so you can flash your high beams. Nice. Let's close the door. All right, let's uh, see. Do we have parking brake? Hood release winch in. Disable parking brake. There we go. Let's move. A little bit peppy for a truck, but, um, you know, it's nice in the game context. Yeah, I would, I think that's probably a clutch issue, why it's revving up so high. It's not a big deal, but it's, you know, sounds like the clutch is applying too slowly if it's uh, revving like that, but it's, uh, look, looks like... Very nice uh, independent suspension on these. See how we can nicely climb over all of this terrain. Let's see if I have, uh, let's see what do I have on for options here. Vehicle damage, let's turn that on. Rather not damage the craft, but I uh, kind of see if we can handle it without any damage here. It's always a good test. This is Harry. I am asking of it many things that are probably... Hey, look at that. See, so no damage on that, even though I'm doing extreme stuff with damage off. That will give me damage. Oh, it doesn't seem to even damage there. Is the damage on? Damage is on. But uh, it's very robust. Very cool. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to test out all the fire... Uh, let me see if I can test out some of the firefighting stuff. Let's uh, go ahead. I'm not going to do the hoses. Let's put it that way. So let's go over here, let's go camera feed, monitor, spotlight, pump. All right. So there we go. Yeah, I'm just not gonna do the uh, individual hoses. You can see there's plenty of hoses, but this is really cool, I like this. Really nice and directional, good flow rate. Like I can put it right where I want it. You know, like I'll hit that light, there we go. You know, so get good saturation on this. Should be able to sit on, on scene for quite a while. This is a really cool vehicle. I like this a lot. It's, um, you know, really great paint job. Really nice work on the workshop page. Functions well. You know, only a little, you know, tiny tiny little nitpick, and it is a nitpick, is that you get that huge rev. Um, you know, a little bit of different clutch application might uh, get rid of that. But that's, uh, that's the only thing. It's really a wonderful fire truck. Thanks for posting it. And the next build is the OSS Trident Shoal D1952. So just the one picture here by the LO, IO. 
First built in 1952, these nuclear-powered destroyers are surprisingly not dangerous due to the thick spaced armor. Torpedoes glance off these bad boys like a toothpick off rhino skin. Still in service to this day, these ships are deadly safe and relatively inexpensive. One of these costs about a third of the indomitable class helicopter carrier. Fits in your standard workbench. Startup guide. Generator throttle to one. Starter on, then off. Wait until the generator dial begins to show power is being produced. Then the dial is showing produced power. Set clutch to whatever value you want. Gun locks. Just to keep the guns from swiveling too much, there are basic gun lock install long guns. Just hit three and they'll disengage. Gun operation, pretty simple. Uh, WSD, pitch elevation, up, down. Arrows for zoom. One for breaches if they have those guns. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So here we are with the uh, Trident Shoal. Take a quick little look. What is going on down there? What is that? Hmm. A little bit uh, monochromatic, but that's often the military is monochromatic. What is going on down here? Hmm. I have no clue what the nozzles are all about. That's interesting. Very interesting there. I have no clue what that's all about. What is this? Floats under there. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. A little bit scallopy on the hull for my uh, preference. Let's go ahead and take a walk on board. It looks like some depth charge. We'll bang one of those off when we get out there. So, space is trigger. So, three it says to unlock the guns. Okay. Probably have to be powered up, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go. Uh, we'll. Uh, in the drink again here. Right, let's get up to the bridge here. Definitely nuclear. You can hear that humming away. Not much rail here to, <laughs> to not end up in the drink. Now, let's see, we have some equipment in here, some pretty basic detailing in here. Alright, so following the. So we have generator throttle to one. Okay, starter on, then off. Okay, where are you at there? Generator starter, okay, one. Okay, so this. I'm wondering why. So is this gauge not indexed? This gauge is probably not indexed if it's flicking around. Um, I don't know why people don't index their gauges. Um, click on the gauge and index it. You know, it's kind of weird that they flick around like that. Now we have speed knots. Okay. Uh, wait until generator dial begins to show power. Yeah, it's definitely showing something. It's flicking around. Um, set clutch to whatever value you want. Okay. All right, so what is why is it doing a wheelie? Okay. So it could definitely use the stability system. What is is there a fire? Okay, there's a fire. Already. All right. Um, sorry about all the noise here. There's a fire already. So. What is up here? What is on fire? Alright, so so this thing like instantly caught on fire. So I remember how to get up to the bridge here. I'm gonna at least try to stop us here so that we can now. Uh... Alright, let's try to see what is going on here, why I'm already ablaze. Going on in here. All right, so everything is on fire. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, okay. So I I still don't know what is up with what is up with these hoses. So that's interesting to me. I don't know what that is. So making a terrible noise here. Three locks the guns. So I'm pressing three. Nothing. 
Okay, let's. I'm gonna go back and look, make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, so just to keep the guns from swiveling too much, there are basic gun locks installed on all guns. Just hit three and they'll disengage. Okay, one thing is if that's the case, uh, you can put it on the handle. So I'm pressing three, nothing. Just pressing the space trigger and nothing. Okay. Let's test out these guns. See if, uh, what does this do? It could probably destroy me, but. Did that do anything? I don't know. Oof. I'll make sure I don't get blown up by the, uh, a couple of blow up down there. Alright, uh, what is this? Okay. Those are rockets, that's cool. Cool to have some rockets there. Uh, let's uh, see if we can't get in this gun here. A little bit wet in here. Alrighty. Little bit wet in here. Uh, let's see. So the other thing too is if you're gonna put the, let me see. Up oh, there's on there. Okay. So we've guns. Let's see. Traverse elevation up down is zoom. Let's click it. Okay. There we go. One breaches. And fire. Close the breach. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Why won't this fire? Oh, I have to manually load these. I forgot. These are the big ones I have to manually load. I got you. Okay. Let's see if I can put a shell in there. Okay. Let's see. One breaches. There we go. So we have a working gun. That's neat. All right. So um, interesting vehicle. As you can see, it, it's having some issues here. We're flooding, caught on fire almost instantly. Uh, I don't know what is up with this. Um, yeah, so it caught on fire almost instantly. You know, if you you know it said set clutch. Let me see exactly what the wording is here. Set clutch to whatever value you wanted. So I did. I set it to 1, and it uh, it blew the ship up. Um, stability system would be good. It does a wheelie, and I'm, I'm just curious what those uh, water nozzles are doing underneath the surface. That's interesting to me. So uh, interesting ship here. Take a little bit of a screenshot here as it burns. But uh, in interesting ship. Could, could use a little bit of work on systems. You know, it's not really running all that well if it uh, burns up pretty quickly. All right, thanks for posting. And the next build is the Sasso Ika Japanese fishing vessel. I like the koi on there. Some nice pictures on here. The Sasso Ika Japanese fishing vessel by Glacialin. Is it Glac? Glacy Land. Glacy Land? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, if you give me a little pronunciation key, I like to try to get the names right. So let's see. Uh, cannot pronounce that. Or uh, Sasuika is an older style fishing vessel that has been fitted with new instruments. The coastal vessel is made to fish a variety of species, but mainly squid. This is the first of a line of many traditional Japanese style fishing vessels. Make sure to try it out at night and let me know your suggestions. Uh, mass 3219, uh, just under 30,000 cost. Max speed around 35 kilometers an hour. Holds 2,000 yep, 2, liters of diesel with refueling capabilities. Depth finder works best in bad weather. Works best in bad weather in shallow waters. Turning is really bad. I'll make it better. Um, quick start guide. Turn on disc displays, I assume. Turn on pimp. There's a pimp on board. Okay. Uh, turn key. Throttle for speed. All right. Tutorial for operating control panel. LED. Uh, toggle blue deck lights. Dis. Toggle displays. Okay. So these are the abbreviations. So nice. So you have an <laughs> abbreviation key. So I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to make fun of uh, the pump. The pimp <laughs> being in the vehicle. 
All right, uh, this is that's good. So you have a this, you have a key here that works for me. Uh, as somebody who is well versed in acronyms, um, it's always I have no problem with acronyms as long as there's a key so I can figure out what I'm doing. So LED is deck lights, disc is displays, nav is nav lights, cab is cabin lights, a work is work uh, work lights, front lights. Uh, PMP is the pumps, not the pimp. So a pimp won't come out and slap us. Uh, credits here, are all the credits. All right, and let's go on to the build. All right, here we are with the fishing boat. So let's go ahead and let's see if I can do it. Ah, on one, on one. Look at that. Somebody, somebody's an expert. <laughs> let's do a little walk around. So a nice little bit of deck detailing. It's not overdone, but it's um, you know, you can see there's a little bit of detailing for the planking. Let's go ahead in here. Yeah. So it looks like, I'm not sure what this space is all about. Uh, this might be simulating a live well or something. That's interesting up here, this angling. But uh, this could be sim this could be simulating a live well for uh, fish. So if I can get out of here, we can return to the build. Oh my god, click on the ladder guy. Yeah, for some reason, sometimes I try to click on it and I can't click. All right, very cool. So nice and basic. I like these basic little boats too. Let's take kind of a look at the hull. Pretty good hull design. I like the uh, squid. I really like the squid on the side there. Nice color scheme. I don't see this kind of like bright color scheme. Um, I like the teal striping. I like the teal squid. I like the uh, Japanese writing. Very cool. I like that. I like that real thin water line. That's neat. Nice simple boat. Some you know some of these simple things I really like as well. Just. Um, very rarely do I do something simple and just having like every once in a while I'll bang out a simple build. I'm like, oh, it's nice just having something simple. All right, so let's see. Turn on dis. All right, whatever you do, don't dis the pimp. Turn on the pimp. Uh, turn key. I also like this this blue color scheme is is neat for monitors. That just it pops, you know, for some reason it's. I tend to do like old, oh, I don't know, 70s, 80s, like green, like kind of old school. And this is kind of like just refreshing to look at. Doesn't strain me, doesn't not strain me eyes. All right, so steering's AD, throttle is one up and two down, six reverse. Okay, so I was, I was gonna say, do we, is only one, uh, one of the engines started, but it has a propeller in the center and some side rudders. Could use a stability system. One of the things I would rec oh, I can't really see in the smoke, but there's two rudders and one propeller. You tend to put the rudder behind the propeller. And so one of the reasons it's a little oversteery is you have probably double the rudder you need. If I were you, I would I would put the rudder behind the propeller where it belongs and I would cut it down to one rudder because it's a little bit, it oversteers. And the only reason I'm kind of talking about this is it said in the build there that it, uh, turning is really bad is what the workshop page said. So that would be my only suggestion to help you turning it better is if you, uh, probably cut your rudder down to one, I think you'd be doing much better and putting it right behind the propeller. Um, a little bit of a stability system would also help with the... That might actually help as well with some of this rocking and rolling. But uh, a little bit of a stability system, like, you, you don't have to make it completely rock solid. You can still get a little bit of a list and a turn. Just uh, tune that in. But uh, a little bit smoky. You know, maybe some cats on there would be nice to see. You know, it's just this is supposed to be a coastal fishing. Here's a depth. Um, that's the depth finder. That's that's a nice feature, especially for a fishing boat. That's gonna be you know dropping pots maybe, or just uh, you know fish finding. So is this engine temperature? If it's engine temperature, it's coming up pretty fast. Batteries here. I can't tell. What's the uh, indication on there? Let me see. I'm trying to see electrical. Electrics one. Let's see, custom menu. Make sure infinite electricity off. So I, I think this is the battery level. That's just interesting to me. That's on the bottom is full because like the fuel looks full and that's up top. But I could just be reading it wrong too. So here's 35. That's a sliding scale. So 
Nice, nice clean um, gauges and everything on here. I like the compass. The compass is nice. It says both north, northwest. It also gives me degrees. It also gives me uh, rotation, so you can see you're rotating. That's really nice. Um, I like the 45 degree monitors. That's a uh, that's on the workshop, I believe. You can also add just XML them, but um, but uh, nice little fishing boat. You know, I'm curious about this temperature here, though. I'm not going to run it all the way up, but um, it sounds like this, it, it seems to me like this is going to overheat. So you might want to look into that. I, I don't know if it's going to overheat or not. I'm not going to wait till it overheats, but let's go ahead and slow down. Wow, that's fast. And then let's go ahead and kick it in reverse. Do a little maneuvering in reverse. It does not like maneuvering in reverse. So the issue you're having here is um, you need a stability system. Uh, with a stability system, it should fix that. Yeah, at some point I'll put I'll put out a stability tutorial. I've been working on on some uh, stuff in the career build series. I've been doing stability, so I'll just I'll bang together a stability tutorial at some point and put it out. But uh, a little bit of stability system will keep it from rolling over like that. The game wants to use the prop to pull you out of the water, and that will cause instability. And but uh, I'd say you're over ruddered. I would I would go to one rudder. That would probably help, and um, you know that would cut it down or just limit these by 50%. But uh, you know, generally my whole my kind of my whole thought process is, you know, if you follow how, why they do things realistically. Um, you know why they do things IRL it tends to work in game as well and so there's a reason why they put the rudder behind the propeller it doesn't really work in game because we don't have the flow off the prop wash but um, you know probably one propeller you'd get a little bit less tippiness and if you put a stability system that would keep it from ro rolling so eventually I'll put out a stability tu tutorial but despite it being inverted here um, I think this is a really cool build I really love the paint job it's uh, it's a really cool paint job here. I like the um, the squid on there. I like all the dials and gauges. You know, it uh, it behaves really well. You know, it's docile. It's not um, you know, it doesn't scare me in any way, shape, or form. But uh, it's a really cool little boat. I like it a lot. I like it. It's very simple, and that's sometimes you know. You know, I, I, like I said, myself, I get into really complex builds all the time, and so it's nice to see something simple here, but uh, just a couple tweaks, and your handling will be much better. And I think it'll be a really cool little boat. The other thing I would say is just watch your heat. Um, you know, we were already up to, like, almost 70 degrees, and we didn't go very far. Your engine is revving very high, so with a little bit of gearing, you could probably... You could get the exact same speed with with much lower RPS, and then you don't have to worry about um, overheating. So, uh, really cool build. I liked it a lot. And the next vehicle here is the KT10. So I played with this just a little bit with Endo on a uh, on last week's uh, weekly top five. And so let's take a look again. So the KT10, really nice uh, thumbnail. This is the kind of the thumbnail I like. Nice action shot with branding the name of the you know the model of the vehicle and then Karn has his branding there um, you know nicely done thumbnail you know it draws you in makes you want to makes you want to play with it uh, nice pictures here really you know I talked about this some before so I'll go into more commentary when we actually do the walk around but really nice workshop page here with lots of pictures you know because a lot of times you know like if you you know I don't often use other people's builds and in my uh, in my own gameplay and so i'll just go on the workshop page sometimes and check people's builds out I'm like oh that's a cool build and and it's really nice to see all these pictures and i might never even download it but it's um you know i get to i get to look at it and kind of experience your build and i really love uh, a nice workshop page so that was by carnival the kt10 uh kt10 uh, i'm gonna have to pick some brains on how you do this in the workshop page uh you know that's really nice. I like that a lot. Nice drop shadow on that. Nice action shot of the you know of a double locomotive coming through. 
car on KT10 is a diesel electric locomotive based on the GEC 44-9W, but with the nose cut off. I do like the flat nose on this. This is some, that's something that I really did like on this. Uses uh, TCP compatible with all trains that use TCP standard. ASTR if you're looking for compatible rail cars or a loaded check out ASTR. Um, warning: Infinite electricity is off. Good. That's how I do everything. Uh, train is a horn that will, with infinite electricity, sounds constantly. I uh, really like these types of pictures. It makes it easier for me to look it up, and uh, you can see all of your um, requisite switches, and easy makes it easy to find. Uh, manual. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do that when I get operating. Again, another nice inlay picture here. Uh, paint, global livery, top speed, 200 kilometers an hour, li limited, mass, 9635, cost um, 136991, so Shay's not cheap. Um, inline 5, 3x3, three three. Uh, credits Ollie helping the TCP working and general train help, uh, urine wins, the engine controller, Yan global livery, and do not upload this uh, creation without my pictures. So we'll uh, go ahead and we'll take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look here. So a lot of nice detail and really great work in the paint here. I like this lime green. I really like all the riveting, the panel lines. I like the little screw holes here, the carn inlaid into the, uh, you know, in, inlaid into the panel. Nice 863 numbering on there. Really good work on the bogies here. Putting all the little details for like the... Uh, you know, I, these would, if, if, you know, I know trucks better than I know trains, but the um, actuators for probably the braking there. Really nice uh, global livery on there. Nice louvering work on here. Again, all these little, um, like, rivet lines and louvers and simulated louvering up there. And, like, you see they're multicolored, so they kind of fade. Much more detailing than I can uh, ever, ever maintain an interest to do. Really cool. I like it a lot. Looks very nice. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we have a couple access hatches here just to look at the engine, which is nice. You see quite a few of them. Go ahead and we'll get um, inside. And there we go. And we have the head here. There's a light switch there. Come on, click, 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 click. Come on, toggle it. Ugh. Struggling to get get on there. Now I now I can't let it win, so I have to get to it. All right, uh, cabin lights, cabin heater. We don't need right now. Passenger seats. Nice detailing on the roof here. Push to talk. Wipers. I talked about these wipers in the top five. I really like these wipers a lot. All right, I'm going to take a look at the um, so operation. So let's uh, go ahead. I'm trying to do it in um, kind of in conjunction with the picture here. So fuel and control switches to on. So I need to find those. So I'm just going to go through everything anyway. Just kind of I want to see everything, know where it all is. Horn. Couple. I'm just looking at everything. I want to know what everything does before I start pressing. That's kind of a somebody who actually operates vehicles. It's important. So uh, fuel and control switch to on. So let me go ahead and check this. All right. So what the only uh, thing that I would say is on the diagram it says fuel and control and it points to this one. I would just name it the th same thing, but. Uh, you know, because I wasn't 100% sure if that was what it was. So a little bit of hesitation on my part. Just, again, that's just because I'm used to operating complex machines. It's like, if I don't know what a button does, I do not press it. Uh, engine run to on. Generator field to on. Okay. Uh, request master button, then check master light. Okay. Request master. There it is. Master light comes on. That means this train is going to be is going to be the one running. If we had multiple selected, set lights to auto or manual. Switch desired lights. So let's turn on auto lights. Uh, let's see. Regenerative brakes to on optional. Let's do that. 
So again, I'm, I'm just hunting for him now. There we go. Toggle regen. I can't really see the manual and the picture at the same time, so I'm kind of hunting a little bit. Uh, adjust dynamic brakes optional. Okay, where is dynamic brakes? I thought I saw them. This must be dynamic brake. Okay, setting zero off. So let's set that to one. That'll give us a little bit of regen, uh, I believe. Leaving these two settings at the default value will disable automatic braking. Set reverse or direction forward. Okay. So let's see. Reverse or direction. I this right here. I remember this from before. Uh, I is idle. R is reverse. And F is forward. Set handbrake lever to zero. And you can see the brake pressure comes off. Those are the nice little details I like to see. Set desired speed on throttle. Again, it's nice to have a throttle with a set speed. That's how I do mine. I know that I'm going to get 19 kilometers an hour. If I set it to 19 kilometers an hour, I don't have to wonder how fast I'm going. Um, if I want to slowly couple to a car, oops, sorry, wrong way. If I want to slowly couple to a car, I can go to 3 kilometers an hour and couple to a car and not smash into it. And then as soon as I'm coupled, I can quickly go, let's go up to 19 to catch up to the next car. Okay, we're coming up to the next car. Let's slow down to 2. Click, we, we coupled the car. Let's push. Okay, we're coming up to the next car. Let's slow down. That's, that's what's nice with having a uh, kilometer-based system. So let's go and crank it. We'll do what everybody wants in Stormworks. It apparently is. How fast does it go? So there we go. We have 143 kilometers an hour. Nice, good quality speed there. Definitely looks the part. I really, I really like the way. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the uh, little uh, windshield wipers in that view. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. So a really cool vehicle. If I can steer out of it, there we go. It's a really cool vehicle. I like this a lot. Uh, second time I've I've played with this here, so. Uh, Really cool vehicle. Definitely a lot of really good painting went into this. The operation is really flawless. Little detailings like you see the fans behind these um, old style radiators. I like doing that. It um, you know it it makes it seem realistic. Makes it seem like it's a real build. You have things like the model the um, unit numbering here. I assume it's unit, not model. That would be lit up. But um, really cool train. I like it a lot. And our final build for this video is going to be the SA-H90-2A Super Medium Search and Rescue Helicopter. So a really nice thumbnail here. Uh, not a, nice, a lot of nice work in, into that uh, SRS. Nice thumbnail, draws you in, makes you want to play with it. It's cool, the little drone. Nice pictures here. A lot of nice gauging. Some firefighting, really cool. So this is by Ollie and Jan. Skies Hangar, Scarborough Rescue Services. Again, I really like these inlay pictures. Makes it interesting. So even if you're not going to go try out the... That's the SRS um, collection. Even if you're not going to actually try out the vehicle in game, you know, it makes it rewarding just to come in and to check out the workshop page sometimes. Uh, the SA-H98 is a super medium all-weather uh, search and rescue helicopter thanks to an all-glass digital cockpit. It's a breeze to fly. A pair of SkyTech JT7 engines can push to top speed of 149 knots and make it a high-performance reliable helicopter. It represents a durable platform from its military predecessor, the H-80. A spacious and heated cabin with seats for up to 14 people will offer a comfortable cruise the Block 2 modification offer, offers new cabin avionics and various improvements to performance and efficiency manual. Startup bad. I'll oh, we'll go through this when we go through. Let's see tech data. Nice to see some tech data. I won't go through all of it. I really like these schematics. These look really good. Here is the Block 2 overall. So the SA, I'm not going to say the name again. So that's cool. I like this uh, brochure looking part you see this a lot on uh you know on the pages for real vehicles so it's a nice little detail credits uh z gyro heavily modified clara renders and 3d models um serpentine srs logo and there's the srs disc board so let's go ahead and take a look all right so let's start the walk around here so nice paint job as usual a lot of xmling on this for the window glass 
be nice to have all these windows default just so we don't get the fogging but um you know it definitely looks apart a lot of nice good visibility under here lots of nice little detailing radars and um and stab cameras and all sorts of neat stuff in here nice paint job srs as usual let's see can i find door handles looks like that's one there just kind of walking hitting doors as i go so it's probably on the uh is it looks like ground services panel here yep ground service panel electrical fluid hose and we have the light there very cool nice tail boom on this i like these um i like the way that this uh tail boom's integrated here that looks really nice Really nice and smooth and, you know, even though this is three wide, it doesn't seem too thick. It's well proportioned. Nice looking, uh, like, louvering on the engine compartments and really good detailing all throughout here. Where is there a way to open this? So this looks, I don't know, there's a handle, but there, there's a pivot, but I don't see any uh, clicky clicky. So here's a door. Up oh, there it is. Okay, it's just slow. I got you. You can open. I may have screwed it up pressing it too many times too, so. There we go. I don't know if the door's hanging or not, or if it's a me problem. So I'm gonna up oh, there we go. Okay, so it might be a manual door. That's actually kinda cool. If that's a manual door, that would be cool. But um I don't know if it is or not. But uh it seems a little bit slidey, I'm not sure what's up with that, so uh, lots of good equipment in here, defibs, ropes and whatnots, have these angled seating that I see on a lot of the SRS vehicles, have a door hatch, nice, 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 so you could, uh, drop your winch down there, probably for the Bambi bucket, I'm not sure if you hook your Bambi bucket to this one or not, but you can, uh, utilize this winch there. There's a fluid valve. I'm not going to touch stuff until I read the uh, manual. So let's go ahead and I'm going to quickly go through. So uh, let's jump in the cockpit. So co-pilot, pilot. All right, good. And so uh, again, number labeled, labeled seats is always nice. All right, so battery one and two bus on. So let's go find those. So I'm just going through. I go through everything. I don't try to hunt and peck too much. That way I've seen everything and I know it's easier for me to find it. So there's bat one, bat two. All right, uh, avionics mass, avionics main on. Okay, I'm adding my own words, which I try not to do. All right, those are good, so. Just going through. A lot of, a lot of the times the way they set this stuff up, IRL, is you put your things you're not gonna touch again up top like this. So, you know, you might have your avionics down here. I'm not sure. We'll find it. But, um, you know, you would want your all your engine stuff up top because you're not playing with that much. So, nice layout so far. I'm just looking. Check. Okay, there's avionics main right back there. All right. The SRS startup. Is that SRS? I couldn't, I couldn't see what the, um, what the branding on that was. Uh, eight years on. So I did see eight years. Again, that's why I go through everything and kind of that way I can easily find things coming back. Hydraulics A, B, and C. So hydraulics uh, B, hydraulics A, and oh, where's C? It's got to be this one, C. So these are all in line. This is how you do it in real life. They line, your hydraulic systems would be together. Your electricals would be together. Your engine systems would be together. Um, they used to do hunt and peck back in the day, and they got away from that, which is good. All right. Um, engine fuel valve one and two open. Engine fuel valve. Where are you at? I just saw you there, guy. Fuel valve. There we go. Engine fuel valves one and two open. Engine fuel pumps one and two on. So again, your fuel systems together, that's how it should be. Let's see, parking brake set check. So we want to check that. 
I'm just kind of, I often look to where I would put it and then, um, you know, if it's not there or where I'm used to it being. So generally, you'll often have it here, but again, that could be anywhere, you know. Often they'll get to the point where they put it wherever they need to. That's usually autopilot. There is park, parking brake is on. Yep, so that's in a logical place. Um, let's see, lights as required. So I want my beacon on. So I thought I hit lights here. There's beacon right there. And then rotor brake is going to be off. So assume that's up high because you don't want to be touching your rotor brake too much. Might not be high. Let's see. There's cautions there. Where's my rotor brake? Kind of hunting and pecking now. I should kind of keep it a little bit. So it wouldn't be around gear. You wouldn't want to accidentally click your rotor brake trying to do gear here. All right, let's find it. I will find it eventually. There's rotor brake. Okay, good. So rotor brake is off. All right, engine one master on. So I recall that being... So it says, so there's a little bit of a, just a discrepancy in naming. So this is engine one main, um, and it says engine one master on startup. So that might confuse some people. I tend to like to try to make sure the naming is the same. That way you just don't get confused. But And so it says engine one, two, master on. So sometimes the engine won't start unless they're both on. Now let's wait for them to spool. There they are. They're spooled. Okay, once we have good N2, we're going to go ahead and Gens 1 and 2 are on. Once engines are started, green light uh, start. Green light starting is off. Engine 1, 2, idle flight, set flight. Okay, idle flight. So we're going from idle to flight. So uh, let's go idle, actually. I open this door over there. I'm gonna leave the door open. I don't think it's a big deal. I'm gonna set the parking brake. Uh, we probably should. We probably can taxi out on. I'm thinking we can taxi out on idle. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, so we might need flight idle. We might need flight RPS to be able to taxi. I'm just over controlling it a little bit to start with, so I had a bunch of keys pressed before I got going, so. Alright, taxi now. So, yeah, we need it on flight to uh, be able to taxi, so that's fine. Alright, so we're set to flight. Parking brake already shut off. Um, if ambient temperature is less than 0C, turn on uh, anti ice. So that um, that is uh, not coming on. So let's go ahead and take off. So just a little bit of collective here. Start turning. All right, so that's the end of the startup. The next is the autopilot. I'm not going to go through the autopilot. Um, MFD, I'm not going to... I'll, I'll look through the MFD just uh, kind of casually. I'm not going to go through it really all that hard. But let's go ahead and we will... Where's gear? Gear is in a logical spot right there. As you can see, nice exposed gear. That's often helicopters will have that because they're not going that much. They're not going that fast. Helicopters are also drag machines. They have a lot of drag anyway, so. Uh, let's go play with the MFD a little bit, so. That's neat that it slides in there. I really like that slide feature. So, let's see. Click the T. What does T stand for? T is on the, um, select the ADF waypoint, press T on the HSI, then select your desired waypoint. So that's, it says no signal because it's not, uh, I didn't install the pack. I'm just kind of playing here. Okay, so that looks like add waypoint, clear waypoint. Okay, there's ADF. So that's ADF from point. So probably zero, zero, I would imagine. It's probably going to the zero, zero point of the map. That would make sense to me where it's, where it's showing. All right, and then you have GPS. So that's the GPS coordinates. That's neat. I like that. I can slide around the map, kind of eyeballing. If you don't know how to navigate, you can have a moving map. People who don't know how to navigate. Um, let's put in a squawk code here. He's back there. He is back there. Um, all right, and so let's see. What else do we want to do? We click anything on the engine panel? No, but I like the engine panel. Nice, easy to read gauges there. 
Let's see what else we want to do. Let's go light strobes, nav, formation lights. Yeah, let's take a look at it. So it looks really nice. I like it a lot. Um, we'll do a little bit of a flight here, but um, you know, really, really nice and stable. You can see how stably it's sitting. Rock solid, no issues. You know, really cool. Let's take a quick little flight and I'll do a landing here. So all I'm having to do is pitch. Do a little bit of collective. It's a little bit more of an automated vehicle than sometimes I operate. But uh, definitely that makes it approachable for more people, which is always nice. So. But as you can see, flies really well, stable. I tend to like the like a little bit extra control, or I like to make it a little bit more challenging myself, just because again, you know, I was a commercial pilot, so I get bored if something's too simple. So on my personal stuff, I tend to make it overly hands-on. There's a gear indicator, put my gear up. Oh, I didn't click the gear down, did the beacon locator. There we go, transit, and we're down three green. Let's go ahead and land. So yeah, for my personal stuff, I tend to make it where I have to really control it, where I can get in trouble like this. This is nice for the person who has never flown an aircraft before that they can easily jump in and feel comfortable and fly and enjoy the game and not be like, why is it doing this? And then assume that the game physics is is it's the game physics, not because they just have never flown a vehicle before. So let's go in the uh, hangar. But uh, flies very well, uh, operates really nicely. The buzzer, despite me hating master warnings and cautions IRL, uh, has a nice touch because it kind of just, uh, you know, it, uh, it kind of gives you a little bit more immersion, puts you in the build, so I like that. So you can silence the warnings and cautions if you had them. So I'm not 100% how to shut this down. Um, I don't think there's a there's no shutdown procedure, but I'll kind of I'll kind of do my own here. So we'll do idle because you wouldn't want to be banging on with uh, full thrust when you shut down. You're blowing fuel into an engine you're intending to shut down. So you want to idle them out generally before you do that. And then shut the mains off. Get rid of the ignitions. Gens would come off. Pumps are off. Eight ears off. Then, what did I not? I, uh, hydros coming off. And we'll kill the fuel valves. And I don't know if the I, I don't know if the air if the rotor brakes a hard brake if it's gonna slam it on. Yeah, it kind of slams it on. But that will that will shut it off. I tend to put a little bit more progressive nature on it. Just that's my own personal preference, but. Really cool, really cool helicopter. I like it a lot. Uh, definitely, I can see this getting a lot of use and uh, being very useful in the game. You know, it'd be great for rescues and transpo and a little bit of um, storm link, but uh, flies really well. Intuitive. It has enough complexity that it, it's immersion. It's immersive and it um, is also approachable enough. I think most people can fly it and use it. So uh, great craft. Thanks for posting it. And just one small thing, Jan, I think you might want to add is, uh, you know, when are we getting this AWACS version? Food for thought. And special thanks to Chicken Soar, Skelpton, Glacialian, Carnival, and Jan for posting your builds. It's fun checking them out this week, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.